Hello everyone, this is Grade 6, Module 6, Lesson 2, Problem Set. For number 1 it says, The dot plot below shows the vertical jump height in inches of some NBA players. A vertical jump height is how high a player can jump from a standstill. And we see that there's dots there, and each dot is going to represent one uh, NBA player. So we have to answer some questions based on this. So I'm going to zoom in here, and we're going to go to A, and I'll type in the answers uh, on this as we go along. So A says, what statistical question do you think could be answered using uh, these data, meaning the different points on there? And we already know what it's about. So my question could be uh, as simple as, what is the vertical jump height of NBA players? Uh, so there it is, and I'm going to slide this over and try to get it lined up there. Put it just above, because I want to make sure we can read the question and the answer. So there we go. Uh, B says, what was the highest vertical jump by a player? So we have to look on the chart, and we see that vertical jump in inches. So we're going to go all the way to the right, and we can't say... Uh, 42 what we do is we look for where the where there's a dot all the way to the right and we have two of them jumping right there so in order to figure out what that height is we have to see uh what we're counting by and it looks like we're labeling every two inches but we're actually going by ones so that's going to be 43 inches so if we look uh, at C it says what was the lowest vertical jump by a player and if we know that highest was to the right because the numbers are going up we know lowest is going to be where there's a point uh, all the way to the left and we see right here and it's at 32 inches and that's still pretty high uh, so for D what is the most common vertical jump height the height that occurred most often. So when we look at this, we have to look at where all or the majority or the highest number of dots uh, is located. And we can see that right here in the middle uh, at 38. And it looks like there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 of them. It looks like there's 10 of them right there at 38 inches. And because I counted that out, it looks like we can answer the next one down, which is E. How many players jumped the most common vertical height? And we just counted that. It's going to be 10 players. The next question down um, says, how many players jumped higher than 40 inches? So I can't count this one because it's not higher. It's exactly 40. So i got to look at everything to the left of 40. And I see I have one. And then two of them right here. So I have one, two, three players jumped higher than 40 inches. And uh, now the last one down here, uh, and I'll zoom out a little. Another NBA player jumped 33 inches. Add a dot for this player on the dot plot. How does this player compare with the others? So I have to add a dot at 33 inches. And I'm going to come in, and I see that I have 32 34, so this is going to be 33, so I'm going to add a dot. And actually what I'll do is I'll add that instead in a different color, purple, so I can see it. And we have to uh, compare. It says, how does this player compare with the other players? Well, I can make a number of generalized statements here, uh, but the one I'll go with is, uh, this player jumped the same height as two others and one inch higher than one other player because there's two of them here already, so he jumped the same as two other players, and he jumped higher than this person at 32 inches. So there's my uh, answer right there. Now, <clears throat> uh, down below, this is question two. Below are two statistical questions and two different dot plots of data collected to answer these questions. Match each statistical question with its dot plot and explain each choice. So the, here's the two questions up here. Uh, what is the number of fish, if any, that students in a class have in an aquarium at their homes? 
And the second question down below says, how many days out of the week do the children on my street go to the playground? And I'll do that in blue. Um, so we have some uh, different answers here that we could possibly have. When we see what is the number of fish, we could have any number of fish or get any number of fish based on the questioning from students in the class. Uh, they could have zero fish. They could have a whole bunch, like a lot. Uh, the big thing to know is with B, there's limitations because it says how many days out of the week. Well, we know in a week there's only seven days uh, in a week, Monday uh, through Sunday or Sunday through uh, Saturday, depending on how you look at it, but there's only seven days in a week. So uh, when we look at that, we can go down to our dot plot, and immediately I know the answer to this because if I look at dot plot uh, A, and I'll do this in black so that I can circle in the different colors. So dot plot A, uh, I see this one up here. It's not that it's numbered to 10. That's okay. But it's that there's a dot at 10, meaning somebody has 10, either 10 fish or goes to the playground 10 days out of the week. They can't do that because there's only seven days in a week. So immediately I'm going to look at the second one and I see that there's up to six and as low as two. Well, that's legitimate for this question because they can. They can go anywhere between zero and seven days a week. This one, uh, dot plot A, is going to go with question A because could somebody have 10 fish in an aquarium at their home? Yeah, they could. Could they have zero? Yeah, people who don't have fish. So, it makes sense, and we have to keep in mind what the question's asking. This says uh, how many days of the week, meaning the highest they could go is seven, the lowest they could go is zero. For fish, the lowest they could go is zero, and the highest they could go is any number on there. Let's take a look at page two. So here we are on page two, and it said, reach, read each of the following statistical questions. Write a description of what the dot plot of data collected to answer the question might look like. Your description should include a description of the spread of the data and the center of the data. So let's look at A first. Um, and I'm not going to do all of this, but I'll talk about it a little bit. So it says, what is the number of hours sixth graders are in school during a typical school day? Um, the data is not going to be very spread out because most students are in school uh, the same number of hours. You'll have a little varying of the students who come in real early or students who stay late for after school, but the majority of the data is going to be at a specific amount of time because all students or most of them are in school for the same number of time. So if we look at B, and I'll do B down below, what is the number of video games owned by the sixth graders in our class? This is going to have a high spread, um, meaning there's going to be a lot of different variability and a lot of different varying answers with this because we could have uh, zero because some students in sixth grade might not play video games, and then we can have a very, very high number uh, if students play video games all the time and have a lot of different games that they like to play. Uh, so... Uh, the center is going to be based on the most uh, commonly, uh, the most common number that is given by the sixth graders. So if most people say that they have uh, 10 video games owned, then that's kind of where the center of the data could be looking. So there's my two uh, statements. You want to probably go into more detail and even maybe make a guess at what you think uh, the center of the data could be. Uh, I might say for A uh, that it could be seven hours uh, because most schools go eight to three. Yours might be off just a little bit, but I'm going to say maybe seven hours. Could be the center because that's where the majority of the people are going to be. And uh, for video games own, uh, I'm coming up with a just random number, maybe five. Um Maybe five video games would be the center of the data, saying that's the majority 
uh, or the major number that of video games that people own. Could be more depending on your class or depending on the school, but that's kind of where uh, it could be. Hope this helps. Thanks for watching, and good luck on the rest of your problem set.